Um, this is my log video about the uh, MN15439 uh, a driver board controller board it would be controller so normally when I drive this thing I use STM32 obviously and this display capable of 30 data input so Normally, when you use SPI, there's three, uh, four fundamental wires lines that you want to use. You have MISO, SLEF in, MOSI, you have MISO, MESTA in, SLEF out. You got a clock pin and the CS pin. But this one only matter by, uh, I believe, it's most of the part is just uh, a clocked in data pin. So it's just like, it's just like ordinary chip register, but they have a latch pin and blank pin. They does not have the chip select because it's straightforward to use this display. And we actually, I actually treat this thing as SPI device. And for some reason, those three data pin, if I just put like a single, I put a single bit stream into a single channel like SPI my I'm currently using I'm not sure SPI tool I believe and just blast all the data into the zero input number one of this display is gonna display everything just fine but I just lost the um lost the the grayscale feature and there's two things that I need to test out about this thing. The first one is to use um, three SPI interface. So this thing is quite a bit tricky. And I believe that this is the, the, the actual way that the original controller of this display. Uh, let me open up the sheet. I don't have them yet. Maybe or maybe I download them. The original. Uh, I would call it CPU that drive this display made by Renesas and it is some kind of 32-bit microcontroller way back in the late 2000 we're talking about like the period between 2000 and 2008 and that thing is quite powerful uh, let me search it up a little bit um, what's the name of it it's MC something Wait a minute. Let me open up the data sheet. Not data sheet. I mean uh, service manual of the uh, of the Sony uh, CDX GT seven thousand D. So this thing is actually where I took the display out from the, the front panel of this thing. It looks kind of cool. So we're going to take a look at the... We got the electronical, electronic, electrical part list going up a little bit, I believe. Yeah, I'm here, right here. So this is the... We have the display controller, the M... 30876 MJB. This thing made um um back then I'm not sure is like the company is merged with some company NEC yeah. Not sure that back then this was originally manufactured by Renesas or NEC, but I believe it could be one of them. But that is not the point. So if we take a look here. I, you can see here is um, FL data. So this one is a serial data output connect to the one of the display data output here, input here. So SI2, SI1, SI3, and here and here. I believe that I already have data sheets. Let me search it up a little bit. Um, yeah, this one. So I actually have the data sheet. I remember that I write down to some of the pin that actually use, like yeah, as you can see. So the the yellow uh the 
the, the one that written down yellow color is a uh, serial data output. So we got the SI2 number two is connect to the serial uh, interface uh, TXD number four. We got number three and a number zero. So if you go back and take a look, we, we're gonna remember the pin number uh, 99, 3, and 33. So if you go back here, uh, 99, 3, right here. We got 99, 3, and 33 right here. As you can see, um, it's all right at FL data 1, 2, and 3. So there were three SPI interfaces that connect to this single display. So you got a separate SPI interfaces. But one thing that really interesting about this is, let me see, why is not saving? The thing that really interesting about this, if you take a look at the pin 100, is a clock from the T, uh, TDX4, um, you got pin 100, pin 5, and pin 35, all of them are uh, clock signal for each um, serial interface. If you take a look here, the pin 100 connect to some resistor, a pin 5 connect to some resistor, and is merged together. And down all the way here to here. And we go to the clock and also go through some 100k resistor, which is pulled down to ground. And we got something here. Go along the way up here, which is also another clock, uh, also through a resistor. So for some reason, they have separated a SPI bus, and they join the clock pin together, which is some kind of weird. I never seen this before. If you're talking about multi uh, SPI master out data, what is it called data interface. It would be like something like a uh, duo SPI or quad SPI that mostly used with the SD card interface, SD card, micro SD card, those SDIO interface, and some kind of quad SPI chip. For example, like, oh, it's not here, the uh, W25N01GV chip the, that I replaced on my Lishi Pine Nano, that uh, NAND flash is capable of quad SPI up to about 100 plus megahertz that's crazy but yeah it's utilized of that is only just a single SPI interface but in this case there's no try SPI there's way that I can do this like I actually plan to buy the uh, Lishi Tang Nano I already have the IDE already it is a kind of cheap FPGA and I want to design actually working right now design my own tri SPI controller but right now it's stuck at the problem that the Gowin IDE required the license server and for some reason it's down for a day now not sure why but never mind about that but like if I want to have the at least three output, three zero output, I need to use a quad SPI, which is none of my hardware available. My STM32, this one is the top line, only one that I have. This is probably the, the most powerful my controller that I can use right now on my hand. And it's only capable of a single wire SPI, I mean a single master out, a single data not like this um, tree data out line so either bit banking or this method that I'm talking about will be the way to control the display but if talking about bit banking I need to get around the speed of using a C language by need to use some kind of like writing inline assembly that I used to do and I Certainly, I will do with STM8, and it would be fast, faster, I believe. I'm not sure it depends on many factors, but I never do assembly on STM32 before, so it would might take a longer time. Or I can just 
use I just guess the same method that this my controller used so just got three of um interface you separate the data wire but you join the cloud together and then just use the DMA to throw the data to DMA controller and let it do the job and I'm gonna well I, I've been I've been thinking about this for a couple of days now it would be if this thing worked it would be a really genius way to drive this VFD display and I don't want to go with the FPGA route because that FPGA is something that really complicated and I mean complicated is really that like if I want to go easy which is mean that they have a lot of community support I need to get some kind of really expensive FPGA expensive IDE I cannot handle that cost like um, frankly speaking, I only have about 3,000 baht left in my bank account. Those FPGA are about 6,000 THB, 7,000 THB, and the one sheep are right around 1,000 THB. Oh, yeah, it's about $30, $40. They are all, all, all out of stock. And if I want to go something cheap like 10 nano, they barely the documentation out there, like how to do things so most of the time I need to take a look at the Wally Lock form other uh, FPGA and try to adapt to it and it's still hard because well I if I want to start this earlier I would be like three years ago that I is the really first time that I used C language actually I was used it way back when I was 12 or 13 years old but the FPGA is hard thing and I want to avoid using FPGA because yeah, as I said earlier, it's also really hard to code and it it, it takes time and I don't have that much time, but I at least I can passively learn it, but not as frequently as using STM32 because that is a C language what I have already familiar with. And I actually write a code, but it's not complete, it's just a port from the VFD32 hack project. And most of them are just the same, except that uh, some of the parts here, I believe. Where it is? Um, uh, where is it? Is, is it? is this one is the same code? Uh, oh, this one is different code, sorry, this, <laughs> anyway, I actually implementing the driver for another VFD display of mine, uh, MN28016A, I have shown you before in the fake grayscale project that failed, but I'm gonna revive it with a new controller, uh, STM32, that thing is a crazy powerful controller, okay, this project, Okay, let me get this thing out of the way. So take a look here. So most of the code is actually from the VFD32 hacks project. We have the hack32, not VFD32 hacks. Most of them are the same, except as if you take a look here, I actually write some description. So send each grayscale is typo. Not sure. Send each grayscale bit uh, via uh, SPI one, two, and three by using DMA. And to to be clear that I put this thing in order because I set the DMA priority from the most priority from the SPI one down to the SPI uh, SPI three. It's not SPI. SPI one through three. So, there's gonna be waveform, I'm gonna explain it later. Yeah, so send what, um, each grayscale bit. So, basically, a single pixel, a single pixel, let me put the data sheet up. If, take a look at this chart. So, each pixel has three bit 
control. And in order to use that three bit control, the grayscale or brightness, what is it called, a gradient or tone of, of the brightness. If you, have, if you see here, this is a table showing that, you know, shift register number one, two, three. If you input data high, low, high, blah, blah, you have the like uh, a tone, uh, a brightness of your dot pixel. So each pixel requires three bits to control the brightness, start from zero all the way to seven. You know, zero is the dot is off and seven is the dot at 100% and in the middle all the way around that. There's two challenging things in this. The first one is the I squared, not the I squared, the SPI part. The SPI part, I, I'm not worried about that. But something that I'm more worried about is the GCP pin, the gradient control pulse. This is something that really will, if you take a look at this chart, the one cycle of sending the grid data, like my, uh, my display, this is not uh, MN14440, a, it is, uh, yeah, I said earlier, this thing got uh, 40, uh, 52 grids. And each grid is actually, the original code, each grid is taken about, after we send the SPI data, is taking about, um, if I remember correctly, about 20 microseconds. So we can use that number to calculate the TP and T6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And according to this equation, the example tone, and to pulse the GCP pin. And the big problem is, if I don't use uh, DMA, this the normal the normal way to send SPI data is to use CPU, and that is a blocking method. So non-blocking method is to use DMA. And it just guess how long it will take, like from from running that command after all the parameter done and DMA start, how long it take to go to next cycle, like. It would be longer than 20 microseconds because the 20 microseconds, the way that I calculate is I just use a clock frequency to find that a single bit take blah 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 times and then timed up with 288. So I got total times, but it's not accurate at all because in one cycle, it's first it start from like if you take a look at the original code, this thing is quite. Um, yeah, I'm not. This code is still not properly implemented. But the the SPI part itself might took about twenty microseconds, but overall maybe longer. And I need to use that uh, data to. I mean, I need to know how long it take in one cycle to calculate the pulse, the exact delay time to pulse the GCP pin, and that is a pain, 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 pain. Um, if I take a look, if take a look back at this um, Renaissance Mac controller that originally controlled that display, is actually used a hardware timer. It's used a hardware timer, I believe. It's not gonna be like the method that I want to use, like uh, measure the time it takes and generate the GCP manually, just bit back, you know. It's probably used a timer, but they actually know the fixed cycle time. And they likely use some kind of interrupt, a one timer interrupt to change another a timer that output the frequency. So it's like change the frequency on the fly. So as you can see, this is not, um, this is not a duty cycle changing. But it is um, frequency changing, which is something that I have no idea how to implement it in my controller. But right now, at least I know that if I use two timer, one is taking I don't know, like um yeah, this is hard. Like or maybe I just use a code that use some kind of. And then you just like one timer is a reference timer and they have some kind of counter and in counter like I use if l to check if that number reach a certain 
heart light is counting to 100, which is it like take 100 micro, uh, microsecond. I need to change the speed, just some complicated stuff here. And I'm gonna put the GCP pulsing to the side because right now the, the one thing that I want to implement is 3 data wire SPI. So as you can see here that I talk, talk a little bit about this earlier, I have the separated SPI interfaces by joining the clock together. So as you can see the waveform, each waveform is one is from SPI one is start the earlier and the next one is SPI2 and the last one SPI3. If I had a way to electric electrically combining the signal together, I don't uh, I think theoretically it, it would combine into a one block of a longer signal like the starting pulse a uh, rising edge of the clock is from the SPI1 and the falling edge is from the SPI3. So when you take a look at the actual SPI waveform, it might cover all of the three data, I mean three data lines that the data might, I, I would, what, what the word is called, staggering? Because it's not that a line, so like it's a little bit off from each other, but under the same, like it's under the same clock cycle, so the display shift register might sample that data and make it work but yeah as i said earlier this code is not complete and well this is a lock video anyway so it would be it would take a longer time to do this because i don't have logic analyzer all thing that i have is Arduino Uno that use some logic analyzer firmware, it's not firmware, it's, it's like Arduino code. Anyway, I need to change few things in this code. Also, I need to mention, I want to shout, really want to shout out to ST Microelectronic to fix this. When every time when I regenerate the code, the DMA initialization will be under the SPI1 initialization, and that is problematic because it took me about two days to figure out why SPI DMA is not working. It needs to initialize the DMA controller first and then initialize the SPI and then it's like it's like you turn on a computer first and then you plug your flash drive and you can use file. I don't think it is the same. <laughs> Just <laughs> forget it. <laughs> Anyway, so the DMA must be initialized before the peripheral that want to use DMA will be initialized. So I want to STM32 to fix this. And uh, as I said earlier, I use Arduino as logic analyzer. This cannot capture a fast signal. Right now, I push the SPI to maximum 18 megahertz, and that too, uh, it's way too fast for my Arduino to capture, I might slow it down to about like 500 kilohertz so my Arduino can capture and to see if the waveform is actually correct or actually like what I have predicted. Also I need to send some dummy data because I don't want to build the complete version yet. I need to think how to made the frame buffer array to store 3 bits for each pixel and it is not standard like i have seen most of like this play there's going to be like four colors so it's used 2 bit 16 color is used 4 bit there's like multiple of two there's no 3 bits so this thing is kind of weird this play this this it's just weird thing from japan you know JPN like to make some weird thing, but that weird thing is really cool, isn't it? So anyway, this is just a little short um log video for building this project. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoy this. Maybe, maybe not, but I hope that this display works without using FPGA because that is a pain in the ass. Again, thanks for watching this vlog video. I just want to post on YouTube because 
I want to keep off my progress somewhere else so yeah I can go back later and see them and I want to share with people so again 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 over and over thanks for watching this love video I hope you learned something bye bye